What's up, guys? And welcome to another GC podcast. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second podcast of GC. And I'm your moderator, Udit Singh. And joining me on the panel is Nitin Rao, Quotes, and again for the second time, Nikhil. Yep. So, well, I'm gonna have a challenge for myself. I'm gonna try to not speak louder than this. <laughs> so, so we don't we don't have to fix your yeah. audio and then rats who's behind the camera like breaking his head because Udit was yelling the last podcast. Rats but it was it was good fun. It was good fun oh, nonetheless. Uh, we spoke a lot about what we did last week. I mean, we spoke about the games we were playing. Uh, we spoke about the new titles that we're interested in, but I think this week we're switching it up, right? Yeah, we're and we're sticking to a proper theme this time and focusing on a pretty niche but pretty passionate gaming genre, yep. which is the fighting genre, the arcade, and which is why we have the maestro sitting between <laughs> us. I think I think it's safe to say uh, both of you are pretty like you know enthusiastic about the fighting game community yeah. and. You guys have grown up playing them because we've spoken about like I'm the resident battle royale guy. Right? Mm. Everyone knows that, but it's kind of nice uh, to interact with someone else from the other genre, which, like you said, is a niche. Not yeah. not really uh, played a lot, but you know I've come to realize that there's a big scene, right? Yeah. There's a huge scene that's it's just an underlying scene, maybe in local cafes and stuff, but we haven't seen like mainstream uh, fighting tournaments yet. Right. So. Well, I, I'm the enthusiastic guy. This guy's a guy who has enthusiasm and expertise. Hmm. So, quotes. Let's start off with you, and you know, mostly Smash, yeah. and your obsession with fighting game genre. How did it begin? So I actually was like, I lived in the U.S. and Smash was really popular in the U.S. Hmm. And the first game was Super Smash 64, and that released in '98. Mm -hmm. So we used to play that on Nintendo 64 with my family and everyone in the neighborhood had it. So every single house that you go to in the neighborhood, each person would have a cartridge and we'd play. Mm -hmm. And when I shifted to India, like not a single person had heard of the game. Mm -hmm. So like I tried like showing it to people and people were like, the graphics suck. Mm -hmm. It's such an old game, why are you playing on Nintendo 64? Now the mm -hmm. PlayStation 2 has come out. Mm -hmm. So I tried ever since like as a kid to spread it. Mm -hmm. But I only saw like competitive gameplay in 2015. And that's when I decided to like take the game seriously and then create my own scene and just try building it here. All right. And you know, you got me into watching EVO, mm -hmm. and one of the craziest things that I saw in EVO was, apart from Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which is a whole different beast together, the Smash Melee, Melee, I messed that Melee. up. What, Melee. You know what, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good uh, interaction. So you know, if, if you guys are watching, probably like in chat, so uh, one, type one for, Melee mm -hmm. and melee, type two yeah. for melee because it's like completely different. I think Udit and me say melee and then uh, the US guy says. Uh, so melee. when you play <laughs> when you play CS and you melee someone, you say I melee, right? You don't say. No, we press, say press we melee. 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 Someone, yeah. What does? <laughs> I don't know how you're imagining it. We, we literally say melee. I think yeah. so. We leave it a chat. I mean, one for melee and two for melee. What does Sakura Same say? meaning. Everyone says melee. Because no. when you start the game. <laughs> And you watch through the intro, he shouts Super Smash Brothers Melee. It must be oh, the US dub. Yeah. Anyway. So, <laughs> US uh, but the craziest, going back to the point, apart from Dragon Ball Fighter Z, the, this game, which is more than a decade old, had, I think, more co you know, concurrent viewers than even the other fighting games put together. Oh, and Smash Bros. Right? Yeah, yeah, the Melee. Even more there so than the Brawl, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So the thing is, Brawl was released in 2006 on the Wii. Yeah. And Super Smash Bros. Ball, they kind of wanted to go for a more casual audience mm. because they were trying to introduce a sort of form where you could play with all sorts of controllers, like the GameCube, mm. the Wii Remote sideways. Mm. So they wanted to make it simpler so that like more kids and people can get into it. And it kind of worked because that game had the most sales from all right. the games. I think Smash Bros. in total has sold more than 40 million units. Right. Ooh, so that's a, that's a big number. I know. So between the existence, so now you have you have the Brawl. What made uh, Melee such an... I'm going to go with Melee yeah. for this, for the sake of this. So what made Melee such a phenomenon that it still, per, you know, it still holds uh, relevance yeah. in the modern community? So the, games, the game came out in 2002 mm. and it's been 16 years and it still has an ongoing community. It's gradually become bigger and the reason is Despite being a game that's super old, has no balance patches, mm. they somehow managed to get like 10 characters in the top 10 who are balanced. Right. And within the top 10, you can compete. So it's somehow like a beautiful accident. The top 10 characters without any patches 
mm. are balanced and can fight against each other and that itself created like s a sort of depth mm. that even 15 years into the game people are finding new tech for each of, each of these characters yeah. and there's so much depth and such a high skill ceiling mm. like say if I'm one of the best players in Bangalore mm. but if someone from a different country plays me he can completely destroy me mm. but that person will get destroyed by the best person in his country and that best person in his country will get destroyed by one of the top players in the world Right. There's so much of a high skill ceiling that even like the person who's super good will always lose to someone better. I remember, Nikhil, I'm going to go to you. You were resident battle royale, but off late you were completely like, I, I want to get a switch and get into the <laughs> smash all yeah. of a sudden. I think right. it was um, more to do with the documentaries that you guys shared and mm. the scene and just the skill cap. Because uh, one of the main things that gets me into competitive gaming mm. is the skill cap, right? right. You, this game, like he said, I've seen people evolve and it's not like this. I've seen that whole early on where there was a consistent champion and then the last few years it's just been like mm. random people, kids just coming out of nowhere and taking the throne. That that element, right? And the character selection, like he said, it's vast. It's like it's so many permutations and combinations in that game that mm. there is no like, oh, I, I have a game plan and I'm going to go execute it. Right. Every game, every like second is different. And the skill cap is super high because right. you gotta be on edge, right? So I'm gonna add to that because you know when I uh, when I was in the Street Fighter proving grounds mm -hmm. and when I was witnessing the Smash tournament. That was the tournament in May. Actually, okay. that was in May, and I was witnessing this tournament. And one of these guys, like uh, who, who I think he was in the finals with you, right? Uh, who came from Mumbai? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was D-Block. Yeah, I asked him, so I had no experience back then in Smash okay. and I didn't even know how to hold the controller. Mm -hmm. And I just asked him, how does this game function, right? And he was like, if I had to, uh, if there's one way that helped me improve this game, it was like by learning music. And I was like, that's, that's a weirdest comparison ever because he said, <laughs> it's, this game is like jazz. It's like you don't have fixed combos, but you can just like form endless chain ah, of right. combos ah. and just keep improvising. So in that way, there is no limit to what you can that's do. Crazy. Which is what may add so much unpredictability to an all, which is why I think this game, which was not meant to be an eSports, yeah, developed from pa uh, party game to such a, Pretty much. I mean, like I said, right, I've, I've watched that like three hour long documentary and I watched a lot of Smash Melee like mm. videos. I've not seen one person like do the exact same mm. uh, play style or whatever. They're right. always switching it up. Every second they're doing something different. They're reacting and it's all on the fly because there's no like, oh, you know, this, I'm going to play this character. Maybe I'm a counter or whatever. Like he said, some of the champs are so well balanced. That it, it all comes down to that sheer skill and how far they want to push it. You know, whether they're like a jazz player, mm. beautifully executing all that stuff, or whether he's a guy who who's so in depth with his character that he can pull off any single move. And then like, I don't know, man. That game is. I feel like it's the highest skill cap I've I've seen most of the videos, and I think he's right about that because it's like endless. You know, there's always someone better than you. Mm. Like in PUBG or something, I can be like, hey, I'm better than X Y Z. Mm. But at the same time in Smash, you can say that and then the next year he's going to come and then kick your ass in any other tournament and yeah. you're going to be like, how do you get good? Yeah. Right? So it's, it's, it it's crazy. Happens. Yeah, that thing is crazy. And you guys might be wondering why we're just talking about this age-old game. That's because <laughs> as of this day, Smash Ultimate is just out. Yeah, it released today. It released yeah. today. Yeah. And a major reason for hype for that is this little event called DreamHack. Little event? Little <laughs> just a little, little event. Just a little event. No, but oh, you know what? Uh, before we move to DreamHack, I want to know your background as well. Because, you know, you were pretty much like as enthusiastic as uh, Nathan when it comes to fighting games. So when did you start and what's your like favorite title, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to play on weekends or whenever? Uh, so uh, I'll tell you, I started uh, arcade games pretty early when uh, me and my brother used to go to this uh, shopping mall called uh, Shopper Stop. Yeah, in Hyderabad, yeah. and they had this arcade segment there called Megalo, which was essentially Tekken 2. Okay. Right? And he always used to abuse me. Like, <laughs> like, I could never. Elder? Beat him. Elder brother, six years old. His <laughs> default win. <laughs> default. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so it was like, I always, back then I always used to pick uh, heavyweight characters, like Jack 2 was the character I pick, and he would pick Law. Hmm. And his speed would always beat <laughs> me. And that's, that's how I grew out of heavyweight characters because I knew I could never beat him. <laughs> uh, like, I'm going for the faster characters here. Now. Then I think the first game which really got me into fighting was Virtua Fighter 2. Okay. Uh, that was a pivotal moment and mm. I kept playing. Back then, we see, you, you had three, four games and you just endlessly played them. Virtua Fighter 2, Tekken 3, endlessly played yeah. them. 
and uh, after that, just fighting was the easiest way for me and my friends to like get along because it, you could just jump in, play, yeah. and just get out. Super right? basic in terms of setting up games and yeah. everything. Yeah, it, it finishes fast. You get done, and you can just endlessly replay yeah. with each other. So that's how it is. But then I fell off the wagon, wagon mm. after that. After that. And recently, the, you know, after meeting these guys, and I'm like that old blood started coming back. <laughs> like I need to get back into the fighting game genre. But the thing is, like I was a bit rusty, hmm. but there's still a bit of that intuition that's there from behind, so I could pick it up a bit fast. And it's like the more I keep hearing, the more I'm like, yeah, I want. To but did you like? Game. So you picked up Tekken again, yeah. right? Yeah, I did pick up Tekken. Because it's like you know. For me, it's like a very filthy, casual uh, way if there's consoles at friends mm -hmm. plays. Usually, it's Tekken. I think right. in India, predominantly, it's a lot more Tekken compared to yeah, any Tekken other. Tekken is actually the biggest fighting yeah, game right? in India. So it's I like, yeah. I, all my friends have consoles and they have Tekken. It's like always there on all their devices. Tekken. So I grew up sort of playing a lot of Tekken, but then Dragon Ball Z, like, I think it was Budokai. Tenkaichi, oh, I think that, that, that one, that, yeah, 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 that, that yeah. was one title that I was like, holy, this is, yeah. this is crazy, right, I think it was PS, PS2? PS2, PS2. But okay, Tenkaichi is unbalanced. Insane. No, but as in like, just yeah. the way the game was, yeah. right, I was just like, this genre, because I never discovered that yeah. genre, I just ran into it in a friend's place. So we're talking about unbalanced <laughs> games. No, if we're talking about unbalanced games, I was like, I was gonna tell you, like, we scammed my friend, mm -hmm. like in school at the tenth class of boards, and it was like this guy said, uh, you know, hey, hey, I got this Naruto fighting game, right? Oh, she could oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It was before she put it. Okay. It was the two D fighting game. Okay. <laughs> that was the best. Time. That was the best. And I remember, so he's like, I'm, I was like, no. Clash way. of Ninja. <laughs> no way. Like, no way you did. He's like, what will you give me if I get you this game? I was like, I'll give you 30 bucks. Like, <laughs> 30 done, bucks. Bro. I gave him 30 bucks. We had them. We played that endlessly. Like, <laughs> it was best. You know, it's not only that, you know, you could fight it in a 2D score, fi fast fighting, but you, when you did the special moves, you know, he'd do the special animations of his, like, jutsu, mm -hmm. and you had to, like, put those, like, combos in uh, the... <laughs> You had to press the match those buttons in the right order to get those yeah. things. It was so satisfying. That game was really fun. Though. That game was yeah. really fun. So, yeah, but Tekken was yeah, always the go-to game. Tekken 3, Tekken 5. Hmm. I didn't play 4 and 6. 6 I played. I think I didn't like the campaign. For me, it was 5 and 7. 5, 7. 7, seven was actually my first Tekken game. Really? Yeah. Really? Woo, oh, that was wow. okay. <laughs> pretty late. Makes, makes me feel a little more experienced, but then again, yeah. it's like I'm not I'm not. Because it was the first Tekken on PC, right? Hmm. Right, okay. right. Right, right, definitely. Makes sense, yeah. And so, yeah, but uh, Tekken is again uh, one of those uh, games that is uh, one of the few fighter games that caught on which, which uses the 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, stance, which yeah. uh, uh, which again adds quite a lot to the gameplay with the, with the side strapping and you know because most of the other games I believe when the when the change, change around the character sprites just become mirror images of each other when you when you yeah. know when you, you jump on these yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas in Tekken you, the interesting part is every button is attached to one arm of that person so where uh, where you side strap and yeah, what direction yeah, yeah. you are really makes yeah. a lot of things yeah. so it has a bit of an interesting skill based. But you mentioned Dragon Ball Z. Oh, which that's echo. <laughs> breaks our heart. Which was when you mentioned Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which as of today won the best fighting game award in the Game Awards, and would have, in my opinion, brought fighting game to the forefront in India. Hmm. Unfortunately, not playable. Yeah, not playable. Yeah. I know. The heart, heartbroken. A lot of people were. I think when they announced that it's not going to be. I think it's a. What it was just banned. I mean, you can get it on PS4, but it's banned from the Steam yeah, Store. Yeah, it's banned from the so Steam Store. So all Dragon Ball games are banned from the Steam Store, not just Dragon Ball. What Brothers. was the exact? Was there a? I like think it was the couple. one of the characters. I think was one of the characters was the elephant. Oh, and it okay. Looked so very similar to uh, religious god. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that's that sucks. I mean. It, that's that's a good game. No, because <laughs> I'd, I'd like because it was from the create uh, it was from the creators of uh, was a Guilty Gear. Hmm. Yeah, like, the same team. Uh, Arc System. Yeah, Guilty Gear and Arc System, like very solid game with its mechanics. Yeah. Uh, it was a more uh, I think simplified version of that, which is already a very solid fighting game. No, it's basically the game that killed Marvel vs. Capcom because mm -hmm. they managed to mix a Guilty Gear system with a three v three. Right. And the three v three was Marvel vs. Capcom's thing. Yeah. Which. Avengers and like the MCU mm. kind of ruined it by, by making them no they try to make them add only Avengers characters mm. and remove like remove the, the classic characters yeah. yeah yeah which didn't go well and it wasn't that great they yeah. had like auto combos I think most people do not consider infinite canon right like 
No, like the whole thing with M- like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was the whole comic effect. Mm, and yeah. they just completely made low budget 3D models which mm. looked really bad. Right. And people would rather play Dragon Ball. Pretty much. Looks beautiful. Yeah. So it's already based on this like crazy fighting system yep. built in with this franchise that people people absolutely love yeah. absolutely it's like love. anyone gets every reference i don't know it's like it's yeah. crazy man i think especially in india right dragon ball z is like it was a lot of people's childhood yeah. it's yeah. watched on cartoon way network. more relatable i'd say right. but what about um, street fighter is it like big in india or like uh, i'll be honest apart from street fighter 2 i haven't played any other street fighter but is, is it so are street they fighter has a scene, hmm. but it's a pretty old scene. It's like people okay. who've been in the Indian FG for like 15 years, and they've been playing since okay. Street Fighter That's 2. That's a long time, yeah. And do you remember that uh, Indian gaming show incident? Yeah. Which, uh, the one with the Russian team. So a lot of the Street Fighter... Moscow 5. Yeah. Yeah, pretty uh, much. While it was a disaster for Indian mm. esports, a lot of the Indian Street Fighter community met at that event. Okay. So they moved out of the event and they played at the hotel and they formed their own community there. Oh, that's awesome, dude. So that's I mean, how the whole that, Street yeah. Fighter community was built in India. But how is it uh, compared to, say, Tekken or Melee in India? So in India, there's it's not, not as big as Tekken, mm-hmm. but it's kind of, I could say it's bigger than Smash. In India. Okay. But the thing what I'm doing with Smash is I host regular tournaments, right? So You're basically trying to build it up. Yeah. So I'm trying to get numbers. in new people and it's a game that's pretty fun and I think it could get in like casual crowd too and then you could okay. educate them and get them better into and the game. That's how it started. I mean, that's how and Smash we, culture yeah, started. I think, dude, it's like yeah. safe to say, I mean, League of Legends, when yeah. I played it, mm. everyone laughed at me, right? They mm. were like, dude, Dota is mm. the big thing. But like, you know, we started the community with 10,000 members strong. We have our tournaments, we have our teams. It's and a good start. It's a very good start. League is huge outside yeah, of outside, India. Outside, but Smash, yeah. Smash is, is huge outside of India. Outside Smash of is India? huge in US and Japan. US and Japan. But Smash like, is one what of about the like games Europe in and the rest of? Because I know, like, when you yeah. say US and Japan, because most of the documentaries I see the players. Mm. I mean, there are the Swedes here and there. Like you know, when Leffen, I think Leffen, Leffen and Armada were the top five. And Armada was like insane for yeah. a for a while, right? And then Leffen came to NA for TSM, and then I don't know. He just sort of inconsistent performances, I feel. And then, so the thing with I saw a lot of people just like American and Japanese, like you said, but what about Europe? Like other than the two big names that we spoke about, is that Europe a big Europe has scene their there? own scene. It's okay. not as big as the US, but mm-hmm. they still have their own tournaments. Like I remember showing uh, the tournament called Air 5. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember that one. Where it's, they have, it's, this is in the UK, mm-hmm. in Leicester. Okay. And they have the whole thing in like a huge tent that they set up. <laughs> and it's not the, probably the players aren't as much as another easy sport, mm-hmm. but it's the whole ambience of the event. You can hear, like, it's like when I saw the, watch the matches on Twitch, it's like watching a live event, like a live football event, and people are, like, chanting. Uh, hmm. They're chanting against the players. They're forming slogans, making songs. I remember he made me watch the Evo 2018. Okay. And, you know, he was like, you know, you'll enjoy this. And I remember he fell, to, fell asleep before I did. <laughs> the, the energy in Evo, like, I don't yeah. know if you guys have watched it, but the energy in Evo is, like, it's pretty insane. insane. It's very it's emotional. Insane. Right? And it's very emotional. Yeah, <laughs> it's very win. It's the biggest fighting game tournament. And it's so year. close knit yeah. that yeah. They, you can just see them on stage after every win. Even if it's, like, prelims and, like, lower rounds, mm-hmm. people are just losing their minds, like, every win. I will ask people to, you know, Google, like, <laughs> so, uh, what was it? The Sonic Fox versus, I think, Go... go no, no, no. My favorite match, this wasn't an Evo, but it was the... Leffen versus, versus yeah. Leffen versus uh, like Go- what's the name? Goichi. Goichi, right? Yeah. Oh, you showed me that one, yes. right? Oh my God, very. That was uh, like all I have to search for is Dragon Ball Fighters best game ever. Right. You just get like ten results. People were like, "Why is this not the anime?" <laughs> right? I'm just. Kidding. So the thing with Leffen is he's top five in Smash, but he's also top ten in Dragon Ball, okay. and he's so balancing like, two games at once. At which once, is yeah. So two I'm, very different games. So what happened in the Evo 2018 was uh, it was uh, Sonic Fox mm-hmm. who apparently beat Goichi. Right, and Goichi goes to the losers bracket, defeats everybody in the losers bracket, mm-hmm. comes back, beats uh, um, you know Sonic Fox one. Bracket has been reset. The last match is so high; they just <laughs> go neck and neck, and everybody's losing one character, one character. Then they summon the dragons, and you know it, it, it just goes in the anime form, right? And the aesthetic suits so well. Yeah, everybody, and you just see the meter, the. Concrete mm-hmm. view meter, right? Just jump, jump, because <laughs> everyone's just going sharing and going crazy. And everybody on Twitch is losing it. I think it went to what two fifty to forty eight thousand, mm-hmm. which was the highest. And I remember it was like six in the morning, and I'm high, because, but I'm this guy is asleep. After <laughs> <laughs> tells me to smash watch. got over. <laughs> oh, smash <laughs> got over. He's like, I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm good, oh, guys. Let's get back to smash now. 
Okay, so Smash Ultimate. Mm -hmm. What are the changes and who are the most high? I think you want to main Pikachu and you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was it was it H Box in Armada where mm -hmm. he used a lot of Pikachu. I don't remember. That was a, I think did I show you the match Axe versus Silent Wolf where yeah, he killed him in a minute? Yeah, Axe was uh, the four. I think the four stock in yeah, one the minute. Yeah, the four stock in yeah. one minute. Yeah, that's the one. I think that's when I was just like, dude, the character was broken. Like, in my mind, I watched like the whole documentary yeah. and then he shows me that one match and I'm right. like, wait, these guys took like 15, 17, 12 minutes and then there's this guy with Pikachu just like four stocks in a minute and he's just kicking his ass. Like, I was just like, what's happening? <laughs> and then I looked at it and then looked at the, you know, forums for like patch notes and stuff and they were just like, Pikachu is like broken. Like, you know, it's, it's OP. It's, it's up there with like the other tier, like top tier characters. And then recently I found out that I might be getting a Switch. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like focused. I'm gonna be the next big best Pikachu player in Bangalore. You know That's why I'm, I'm <laughs> very happy with Ultimate as well. Uh, for some reason, like when it come, came to Mele, I somehow gravitated towards Young Link, mm -hmm. right? Uh, while I, I lo loved his movesets a lot, and uh, but he, he, he lagged. A, a very slow character in comparison to the other ones in not my opinion. Not really. Not really, but it was that was a bit practice. Of yeah, that <laughs> aside. Okay, don't throw shade on me here. But, <laughs> Just like you need <laughs> But he's seen quite a few buffs as well. And I'm interested to check Young Link out again. I'm sticking to that. What is what is the, the, the top like you know, first other than obviously everyone, each of their uh, characters have each of the players have their mains, what mm -hmm. is like the go to like you know it's it's you, in some games there are like broken guys where you'll like be the like top most best yeah, like characters. the best where you're so like dude I'm, I'm gonna like I have to try hard to beat him. Usually in like in Smash Melee for example, Fox is the most broken character. Yeah. But the reason why this game is balanced and beautiful to watch is because Fox is the most broken. He has the most broken frame data. He can mm. like throw you off the stage and down B and you die in one hit because mm. you can't recover. But the thing with Fox is even though he's the most broken character you need to be able to master him to reach that level of broken. Okay. Because Fox is also the easiest character in the game to combo. Hmm. So it balances itself. So if like a scrub tries to get really good <laughs> with Fox and someone who's a little better than him are playing with a worse character, hmm. they can completely combo him off the stage. And it's got that sort of balance where yeah. it's like high risk, high reward, where you have to get really good with the character One to character, be able yeah. to punish. Okay. So one of the major criticisms I've heard with Smash when it comes to balancing character is that some of the heavyweight characters are have an inherent disadvantage when compared to the quicker characters. That's and in all. I think that's in like all. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They're big. Tech in as well. They're big, but then like recovery is a huge part in Smash. And well, do 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 these heavyweight characters like struggle with that? Not really. Like it depends. Like mm -hmm. you should see King K. Rool mm -hmm. in the latest Smash Ultimate. Mm -hmm. He has a really really good recovery. Okay. The problem with slow characters and big characters is that they can be easily comboed because they have the power mm. but you have to be able to land your hits right. mm. and if you're unable to land the hits you'll get comboed mm -hmm. so the whole thing is if you can play smart and land your hits then mm. a heavy character is good yeah. if you can't then you, you're gonna lose so see that was always me when I played Jack 2 against my brother pretty much right? <laughs> and then Law is just like what the hell when right. you, if you land a punch Law is gonna get hurt pretty bad <laughs> it's just so that you didn't feel I never landed a punch there there. <laughs> so uh, but let's get to this important thing. Like we were always uh, we were talking about the dream hack. Dream hack, yeah. yeah. And how did that happen, Nitin? So dream hack will be <laughs> happening <laughs> on December twenty first, twenty third. Yeah. And mostly like Indian tournaments and stuff. They would focus on the mainstream games, mm. which is understandable. Mainstream games in India are Counter Strike, mm. Dota, PUBG, mm. and you could say FIFA. Mm. Although FIFA has more of a casual audience in India than an actual mm. competitive scene. So what I've done is that I've been hosting tournaments in Bangalore for Smash since 2015. Mm -hmm. That's how I kind of built a community. Right. So I, I do know like a few people outside who've noticed the scene. I've made like, I think most of the viewers of the Twitch streams we host, I think half of them are from the US. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like not many Indians are that interested right, in yeah. watching our streams besides our friends. Mm. So from the international viewers, one of them uh, actually offered to help me mm. like contact Alex Jibeli, mm. who's the he's actually the head of fighting games department in Dreamac, the international one. Mm. And so I spoke to him mm. and told him I didn't tell him that we need please get Smash. Mm. But I also <laughs> told him that Nintendo doesn't have any presence in India, mm. which is true because Nintendo 
was known to people in their childhood. They used to play Mario as a kid. Yeah, pretty much. But that's all people know. They know Mario, Pokemon on the Game Boy. That's it. That's they don't it. know anything else. And when we like played Mario, you can know him as the character. Mm. And now he's in a game. But people don't know that. People mm. don't know that there is a console out there that is a portable handheld mm. hybrid, which costs less than a phone. Uh, I have a phone that's 30k. The Switch costs 18k. Mm. But because of because the Switch is manufactured in the US, there's obviously import tax. Mm. Right. It costs a lot when it comes here. So no one's going to buy it. But since PUBG Mobile and Fortnite are pretty big games here, Fortnite's already on the Switch. Right. So if you can have a portable game with almost PC graphics mm. and handle like controllers, could be something that they could advertise. Right. And I also told him that there is a fighting game scene in India, mm. and there are top players like. Actually, you're talking about the, um, Tekken, right? Tekken, yeah. I, I followed the guy you guys are talking about mm -hmm. as well. So you were talking about how, like, also, like, the Tekken World Tour happened a few days ago. Yeah. And there was a panda player who was. He's Rang Chu. And he's been a panda player. He's been playing panda for a long right. time. And he beat Kudans. Kudans yeah. was last year's Tekken yeah. World and Champion. And he was, I think, on Devil Jin, that hmm. whole yeah, so set. So Kudans yeah. is world number three hmm. in Tekken. Hmm. And we have a player from India, from Delhi. Tejan. His name is Abhinav Tejan. And he, like a few months ago, he went for the SCA tournament okay. in Korea. And he beat Kudans. Yeah, yeah. He beat Kudans in the But I think, like you mentioned, yeah. there was literally no one covering it. Uh, right. There's no right. like Let's social media it. hype, right? It's like more people abroad know about Tejan. Yeah, he's well people. respected in Korea, but when I ask people here, they're like, who? Yeah, because I, I mean, I, yeah. I follow the so called esports scene, but like when you mentioned mm -hmm. this and I looked up, I was like, wait, this guy yeah. exists. It's just that he exists yeah. on like international forums and yeah. not, nobody in India is covering I mean, it. So. Like if you, if you, because if you consider that on a scale, if you put it in an analogy, it's like Indian esports, like some. It's like you going <laughs> up in <laughs> League of Legends and winning the tournament for uh, India and how big coverage that would get. Yeah. Or no, but I, I feel like, you know, this is a good platform I guess to shout him out so if, if you have yeah. his Facebook or if Tejan watches this like you know get in touch with us like, we we're, put, we're putting on board man search like, we, for we Tejan you. on YouTube you'll just mm. find his matches no do, does he person. have like a social media profile that we he has can, a like, Facebook page but we should plug it yeah. we should definitely plug it and Come get him these people yeah, man. because you know yes. anyone watching the podcast go like like Tejan's page and then give him a thumbs up and say hey yeah which keep going great. you know because that helps because when you get that backing it really helps okay so but, uh, but what i wanted to uh, say was in dreamhack hmm. what can we expect what can you expect you can expect a 1.5 lakh prize pool for smash see that's what i wanted to get out yeah. <laughs> 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 like now yeah. now you got people batting a knife yeah. right because every sing if you notice like the indian scene in general yeah. like pubg was like oh no pubg nobody cares no yeah. and then suddenly acer was like yeah. hey you go like or there's the hp omen was like big mm. pubg league yeah. go bangkok finals everyone's like we got to play this mm. game so i guess this is like your wow factor and you can be like 1.5 lakhs for melee no, there's no melee. Just okay. Smash Ultimate. Smash Ultimate. The new game right. is coming out. Okay. And with Smash Ultimate, there's every Nintendo character. There's nine yeah. Pokemon in it. Yeah. Can, 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 I, can I have this problem now? But it's <laughs> not going to be in the tournament. No, but no, I can, no. So, like, yeah. in the Game Awards, this was the most hype moment for me in the Game Awards, right? It's like, the you have Russo Brothers come up, hmm. and they award the best ongoing game to Fortnite, two biggest entities in gaming and in entertainment happening, uh, like, on the stage. And then it goes back to, you know, Jeff Kelly, <laughs> and he's going to like announce the Game of the Year award and it just screen goes black. And it just, it's such persona fashion because if anybody who's played the game knows that something like that happens in the, in the game, it just goes, screen goes black, goes noise and he's like, hey, this is me, Joker. <laughs> and I had no idea. I thought it was like Persona 5 Crimson because the Idolist loves to milk that franchise mm. dry. And, you know, uh, and he's like, no, this time we're not stealing any hearts. We got an invitation. I was, that's interesting. The car just turns around and there's the Smash <laughs> logo on top of it. And and I'm like, losing their mind. Yeah, I think, I think in the first uh, 
50 minutes on YouTube of Super Smash Bros. Like the ultimate one, or the, their main account, there was yeah. like 160k views. I think right. first 50 minutes, so people are like yeah. going crazy. Crazy because it's crazy because the crossover. Nobody saw this coming. Yeah, no, saw. Not even you. I mean, in the fashion, you never saw this coming. Yeah. Right. And it's like a PS a game that was on PS4 and just crossing over with Nintendo. And then it hits you because you're a big persona fan. No, 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 no. He's I'm a huge persona fan. If you don't I'm like, I'm, I'm completely on board. And that raises the question. Now I have a new main. And that raises the question. How, who else could come? Like, all of a sudden, like, Anyone can come. Anyone can. Chrono at this point, Chrono yeah, I think at this point, like, I'm just waiting for Goku. everyone, man. Goku, Sakura, <laughs> even the Sakura vehemently denied that something <laughs> would not happen. Goku. <laughs> It's so hilarious, though. The plant guys. <laughs> so, other than uh, Melee, what other games are going to be? At, uh, I mean, sorry, yeah, Smash, Ultimate. Yeah. Sma yeah. Let's just say Smash. Smash. Yeah. I'm not going to say Melee anymore. Uh, so Tekken and Street Fighter are also going to be there. Okay. And they both have a prize pool of 5.5 lakhs. Whew. Man. Yeah. Is Tejon going to be there? Yeah. Most likely. I, I can't <laughs> confirm. <laughs> 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 Someone get in touch with Tejon now. <laughs> I mean, Ultimate releases today, not a lot of pe people must be playing. You can, if you start off, you can just, you know, but if you <laughs> the start off... <laughs> Resident Tryhard's probably yeah. on it as well. We can like take him to the alley and beat him up in the <laughs> 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 no, cause I, I'll, I'll be stoked if Tejon like yeah. actually made it. Cause right. this I think is he is, because it's free for him. Right? Yeah. Easy oh, he's, he's in Mumbai or is he's he... He's from, from Delhi, right? He's from Delhi. But I'm saying like, if he's there, like yeah. definitely want to catch up. Because it's a big event, because Remac... Normally, if you want to play Dota or something, you need to get the BYOC pass. Yeah. That's 3K minimum. Hmm. And you have to bring your own like computer. computer 5K yeah. for like a padded chair. And 15K, they provide their own setup. <laughs> but with for the fighting game thing, you just need like a 1K pass okay. and you get access to all three games. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. actually like really cool. So 1K pass 1K for, for three all days. three titles. Okay, all three, three days, days. Three days, three titles. Damn. And what, you guys have devices set up already I'm yeah, all the right? devices set up so you just bring your controller and yeah. thousand bucks so BYOC and bring you're your paying controller. for you're gonna play for what five lakhs you said five lakhs each or was that five lakh for five lakh for each game 5.5 so it's 5.5 Tekken 5.5 Street Fighter and 1. then 1.5 1. Smash. 1. Yeah. Smash who guys this podcast is basically an advertisement. You know what? I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take part because I'm gonna be yeah, there. So I'm, I'm just gonna take part in button mash and you know annoy someone. I'm gonna go look up most annoying strat Tekken and then just gonna spam one button and probably like walk away with a good chunk of money. <laughs> and if you're uh, not coming to Mumbai, like if Mumbai is too far or something, there's gonna be another event in Bangalore in May. Which is season two of Proving Grounds. Oh, awesome. Oh, so, so season two of Proving, when did season one Season happen? one happened last May. I was okay. talking about that, right? Yeah. But that's oh, so that's season, that season one had Street Fighter and Tekken, and we actually had people from the Bangladesh FGC flight Oh, on. that's cool, man. Yeah. The Bangladesh guy won, hmm. but it was really hard. <laughs> what would he say in the side? He said Bangladesh guy won. <laughs> it's okay. It's good, because then you can breed like a it's whole cool, new level. It's cool, because then you get that sense of competitiveness yeah. that we will beat them next yeah. time. Now and you, now you sit sit down and you practice so that you don't have to say that twice. Like you said, uh, melee was there last time, hmm. but this time it's going to be ultimate. ultimate yeah. And another surprise is they might add uh, FIFA 19 and PUBG okay. to the roster hmm. just to like get in numbers. Yeah. So if we get in numbers for PUBG, we could probably hopefully introduce them into fighting games and get like a huge bigger crowd. That should like be like people. you should do like an amateur section and probably like you know get all the new players to. Hmm sign up and then enjoy the game I mean, as it's well. A, it's a huge, whole new avenue that's opening up. Yeah. And we really, really should capitalize on that. Yeah, because I think DreamHack is your, like, pie right now. If, if you're not going to get everyone to get a taste of that, then you're going to miss, yeah. like, a huge chance. So if anyone watching, you're in Mumbai, you're close by peripheral cities, hmm. make sure you come to DreamHack Mumbai and then support this guy. Because he's been making it happen for, what, a good five, five years. years? Okay, three yeah. years. I'd say five, right? 2015, 2016. Before yes. I knew you, you were still into fighting, yeah. Yeah. Good five years that he's trying and then he's... I guess you were the mastermind behind the whole thing, getting them on board to DreamHack. Or do you have like any other members you want to thank? Or was it no, like I a... I don't want to show off <laughs> or anything. <laughs> no, see, obviously, as a community, you need like help, right? So if you want to thank someone, 
who oh. helped you out. Or you want to thank, uh, you want to abuse someone for not helping you out. No, 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 no abuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just thank Nvidia for giving me this platform to talk. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Other than that, like I'm saying, in the community, in the fighting game community in India, like, do you want to shout out someone? No, nah, it was mostly me. Finally, <laughs> 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 I don't want to show up. Like, flex, get to okay. <laughs> okay. So before we close this segment off, I just want to. Uh, Talk a bit about the uh, fighting community in general because uh, I remember Deep, uh, Deep Energy is one of somebody I want to take and give a shout out to because he's been working for Tekken community the same way he's been working for Smash. Okay. And uh, he took me to this place in Jayanagar called the A Gamer. Uh, oh Cafe, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, which is run by Anurag. Hmm. And I, I ran into this uh, Tekken player from Israel. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So. He means uh, Eliza, Eliza, right? Eliza. Yeah. He didn't play it that day though, but he kicked everybody from every <laughs> other character. So, and he told me that he suffered from the same problems in uh, Israel as well okay. when it came to like, the Tekken community was pretty much dead. And what he told me was very interesting where he's gone up against Indian players, he's gone up against Japanese players, and he found out like more often than not he had more trouble playing against the Indian players than the Japanese ones. Uh, he said, there was always a lot of talent here, but there's not a lot of quantity there. Yeah. But one thing I've noticed is like the fighting community has this camaraderie going on, hmm. which I'm not noticed in a lot of other esports. And I want to know, here's my theory, and like Nitin, you can like poke holes in it however you see. Uh, fighting game is largely solo uh, mastery for a while, right? Yeah, like it's 1v1. 1v1, right? And when you fight, you learn you have nobody else to criticize but yourself and your mistakes yeah, unless the other guy is cheesing stuff. Whereas in things like League of Legends, when you have five people, it's easier to shift blame and be toxic Easily. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So when the, when the, uh, when the mastery uh, form of self-responsibility comes, it just bleeds into you know getting better and learning more from the other people, which breeds this positivity. Yeah. Which I think, is a, I think that's what makes fighting community so beautiful. Yeah, it's like a family. Right. And uh, we hope you guys too join this ever-growing family. And that wraps up today, unless you guys have something more to say. <laughs> Do you have anything I mean, to say? I uh, mean, if you guys have questions uh, for Nitin regarding DreamHack or what's going to happen or any more information about the fighting game community, like do leave some comments or, you know, we'll leave his Facebook as well. So if you want to get in touch with him, I guess that's, I mean, I'm a plus one to the family because I'm going to... Mm seriously look at smart you know ultimate when yeah, i get I my switch i think sk can get really good at this game sk is a god i'm a try hard he's like <laughs> <laughs> he's like the as in of indian yeah. i just like super try hard because yeah. i i looked at it and i'm in su you know very interested so i think that documentary that you guys shared we should drop that in as well because i think it gives like a person like me who never knew about fighting game community or evos or any of the big tournaments it gave me like a good insight and it's good material to watch as well. You right. know, it's the, the commentary was really nice. The, the big stories, like the upsets, is very exciting. Like I said, emotionally, I was like attached to that documentary and I was like, damn. Because every other game, like you said, it's yeah. like team oriented and all that. This is like pure solo, right? Yeah. And they, they get destroyed or they destroy people on stage. And it's just Rewarding, it's yeah. so fun to watch. Even as like a spectator, is you don't know what to expect. And for a guy who doesn't know what most of the games, like most of the combos were, I was more interested. I was like, what is happening? Like with Smash, right? I think it goes upwards, the percentage. Yeah. I didn't understand that till I watched the documentary because I was always like, what is this? Is this some power up or the next move? Mm -hmm. Then I realized it's the chance to like throw mm -hmm. him off. And I was like, damn, that's completely different mechanism. And then you go look at Tekken, it's like fully combo oriented or like the panda dude just showing up out of nowhere mm -hmm. and then one tricking his way. So it, it's crazy. Like so many genres, so many different titles. It's, it's definitely like, you know, something we need to watch out for, something we need to support. Because yes, we'll always have Dota, CS, PUBG and stuff. but. We, we need to like support the FIFAs and the fighting game communities as well because there's a lot of players, like you said, a lot of talent that maybe international people know about, but we're not breeding them or we're not supporting them. I right? actually noticed that it's also like one of the easiest games to watch hmm. as a casual spectator. Like yeah. if someone who plays Dota, they can understand Dota match that's going on. Hmm. But for someone who's never seen a video game before, yeah, the cameras keep flipping and you don't know what's happening. It's hmm. just a top down view. But with the fighting game, you can see two people are hitting each other. Yeah, There's you, a bar going can, down. Yep, you, it's, it's really so easy to watch. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing with fighting games is, it might be fun to watch casually, hmm. but once you actually play the game and learn the mechanics, then the Thoughts more you off. understand, yeah. the more enjoyable it is to watch because you know exactly what the player is doing and how you can try to practice it. Whole other ball game. Yeah. Yep. 
Man, this was insightful. This last three minutes were inspirational. <laughs> and thank you so much for you know actually helping us give light to this new industry. Not new, I mean, but the budding new community. New in India. New in India. And we hope this keeps growing. And hopefully you enjoyed today's podcast. And we'll return again uh, next week. Till then, keep fighting in video games. Bye. Peace.